Yep. It's true. Every single one of my cars broke down within the same week. The S14, as you saw in my previous video when I was trying to fix the exhaust manifold gasket, had a little issues with the studs breaking and I just didn't have enough room in this small garage to get the car off the ground and try to pull the turbo from under the car and it wasn't gonna be easy to get this done in this small of a garage. I have a friend who also has a YouTube channel. I will link down in the description. I towed it to him and he's gonna help me work on it and get that all figured out. And the BMW is gone as well. BMW threw a check engine light for lean codes on both banks, which is actually impossible. And you can only, that means there's a vacuum leak. And E46s are notorious for vacuum leaks. And I took it into the dealership I bought it from because they're really nice guys at Ride Out Motors in Lehigh, Utah. And they helped me out a ton on trying to figure out this issue. Ended up being a blown valve cover. And I also had a window motor broken and the washer reservoir was broken and the pump was broken and the washer fluid as well. And they're helping me out with that. And I actually should be picking that car up today, but that was not a cheap fix. And they gave me a huge discount too. And then the Jeep is another story. So the Jeep, I've owned that Jeep, 1998 XJ Cherokee for about a year and a half now. I bought it completely stock besides the, uh, there was a small suspension lift on it, which I actually added to. Um, and that car has never given me, given me a single issue in the year and a half that I've owned it until two days ago, which I will play you the video of what I found after driving to my girlfriend's house. So yeah, I drove it to her house and then I get out of the car and it's just, there is a puddle of coolant all over the ground. And I'm sure there's a puddle under it right now. Let's go look. Yep, that is all coolant coming down from underneath it. And as you saw, it's leaking just out of a bunch of different places. I have no idea. Um, forums online said if it's leaking straight down like that, it's most likely the water pump, which I would agree. Um, Jeep, ever since I've owned it, has seeped, not leaked, but seeped a little bit of coolant and just burned it off. It's never actually left anything on the ground like this. And you know, every couple months I would just refill the coolant reservoir and that was that, it never bothered me. But, you know, I can't, can't leave it like this. And it, um, also from the videos you can tell, it kind of looked like one of the radiator hoses was also getting leaked out of. So I'm curious if it's one thing or multiple things. Um, let's actually open the hood and take a look real quick. So the water pump is right there. And as you can see, there's the hose right there. That's the hose to the water pump that goes down. That's some dried up coolant right there, which I am not sure. It looks like it's got some dried up stuff all over it. I'm not sure if it's the, uh, a seal that could be wrong or what and then underneath here I mean there's coolant all down the pan just sprayed everywhere and then there's also this like rubber gasket right behind this bottom pulley and it looks like it even might be touching right there I have no idea Can I try and figure out today what the issue with the Jeep is and hopefully try and fix it. On a side note, I've got my side skirts back from paint and check those out. Oh, these are gonna look so good on the car. But my idea with fixing the Jeep, at least trying to find out what's wrong from where it's leaking from, is gonna be to start it, because I notice it only starts leaking when it gets warm. So I'm gonna start it and then wait for it to leak and I'm gonna try and find out where it's leaking from. So, let's get to it. First drips are coming from right underneath. There's nothing on the radiator hose yet. That's all dry mess that is, but they can't really tell. 
I'm gonna try and see if it's coming out of the pump, because the pump isn't right, that, that's not the pump right there, the pump's actually just right above that. So I'm gonna try and find out. Got some coming from over here now. I'm not sure if that's it's running down from somewhere. Up there, this is still dripping straight down. Well, this solves our answer. See right on top of the water pump? All right, that. Right can see it pooling on top of the water pump right there. Which means water pump seal bad. And these water pumps are actually really cheap, they're like 30 bucks, so I mean, I might as well just replace the water pump. I'm also gonna replace this radiator hose because it was noticeably leaking as well. So let me call and see if I can grab one of those from a local parts store. Awesome news, they have or a water, uh, uh, an auto parts store just down the street from me has water pump in stock and the radiator hose I need in stock as well. And let's just take a look at this. Look how much that's dripping just from sitting here for maybe a couple minutes. I mean, most of that's all new. But yeah, so we're gonna not take this. Let's take that. A little 1998 Isuzu Rodeo. It's got at least over 300,000 miles. Clary story on this car. I know it says 271,000, but there was a, while, a couple years that the speedometer didn't work, so it didn't count miles. And so it's gotta be at least over 300,000, I would, I would guess. I mean, that's my just guess. Plus I drove it, I've been dry, driving it to work because as I said, every single one of my cars is currently broken. And it didn't count any of those miles because the speedometer has been working. Told ya. Check engine light went off. Huh. Got a water pump and lower radiator hose. Looks like we're good to go. So I had to take the electric fan out to get more room. And the belt's not enough tension to hold the pulley, so I'm having to use channel locks. Which might to both double-handed, but I'm trying to make some progress here. Well, I got the lower hose off. off I got the front of that off got the belt off so now it's just pump time so I got that up crusty <laughs> crusty so I've been trying to clean up the gasket because a lot of it stayed on almost all of it stayed on but I mean it's you know 22 years old and it's just like baked on there. You can kind of see it's just like baked on there. I've been scrubbing it. I mean, look at all these paper towels. I've been scrubbing it. I've been trying to use sandpaper to try and try and sand it off. I've been using a uh, shoot, I can't a razor blade to try and scrape it off. And I mean, one, it's at an awkward angle. Two, it's just all baked on there. And three, I'm running out of daylight. Let's see the sun setting. So, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the new gasket and I'm gonna get some gasket maker. I think I have some left over from when I did the oil pan on my S14. And I'm gonna just kind of smear some gasket maker around it. I'm not gonna try and glob it on. I don't need a ton because I am using the stock gasket. Not the stock gasket, but I am using an OEM gasket that's new. But I think I'm just gonna smear some gasket maker around it just to make sure it seals and then I'll probably wait until tomorrow, make sure that dries all the way to fill the car back up and run, run it with some coolant in it. So yeah, let's get to it.
I also need to get this hard line off to put on the new one. Awesome, so we have the pump just kind of tight on there. I, I smeared the gasket cleaner, um, gasket maker just around it. Not a, didn't do a bunch, just, just kind of smeared it so I have a nice, even more even surface for the gasket to seal too so it wasn't, so hopefully it won't leak. And then, uh, you know, when you do that, you gotta wait about 10 minutes for it to kind of start to set. So while I was getting this all ready to go on, you know, it took about 10 minutes and then you set it on there and you tighten them. You tighten it all the way down so it's all flush, but you don't tighten it all the way and then you wait you know, another 30 minutes and then you tighten it all the way down and then wait to put fluids in it for, you know, you know I wanna, I'll probably let it cure overnight, but I mean, look looking pretty in there. Too bad I have to use this old crusty line, hard line right there. There you go. That's where it's at so far. Also gonna change this lower radiator hose that wraps around up here. Uh, oh, right there, it wraps around it right there. Got to change that as well because that was also leaking. As you can see, it is now dark. I have this all put together now. Put the pulleys back on. Um, I'm gonna wait until I tighten these, and I'm gonna wait to tighten these until the belt's all tight, because then it'll be easier. I don't have to hold it as much. I have to come back to this another day and clean up. Oof. I also forgot to mention I got a call today and BMW has more wrong with it. It's going to cost even more money. So, didn't even get to pick that up today either. So, tomorrow hopefully, fingers crossed. Alright, so it's a new day. Got everything back out. Don't have much left to do. All we got to do is get the belt back on, tighten the tension, tighten the belt, put the shroud back on, put the electric fan back on, fill the fluids and we should be good. So let's get crack a lack and already almost out of sunlight. It's getting dark, but... To try and figure out how to route that belt took me way longer than it should have. I had to look up a video on YouTube and watch literally the entire thing to try and figure it out. But if you ever do it on your XJ, just remember, goes all the way around the alternator and then immediately up around the fan. That's what I had wrong. But this is all tight now. So the same amount of tension. And you can also check by the threads, you know, what threads are clean and what threads are dirty on the tensioner. So all we have left to do is tighten these four bolts, put the fans in, and then put fluid in her. Uh, next time we'll come back, it'll be running. Well, still leaking. Still leaking. Not sure what to do about this now. Yes, as you can see, I made a mess with the uh, gasket maker. I'm gonna try and clean that up and kind of have to redo it, I guess.